Sky News Australia, leftist idol Che Guevara was responsible for so much death and misery. I can't wait to see what Sky News Australia has to say about this one. I bet it's really insightful. I bet they really know what they're talking about. I cannot wait. Well, it seems that Cuba is actually on the cusp of another revolution, with the biggest protest in decades seen in the communist country. And although unauthorised gatherings are illegal, thousands are prepared to take on the government and take to the streets to protest against the government. They're complaining about the collapse of the economy, about the lack of food and the lack of medicine, inflation and the lack of freedom. And like all communists... And Everyone knows you can measure freedom. ...socialist dictatorships, the government blames external forces for their failings. But we all know it's actually the evil ideology of communist <laughs> and collectivism. This, this guy just like, we all know, you know, source. Um, everyone knows, you know, everyone fucking knows it, man. Don't you? That's just what it is. It's see, it's we all know. Don't need to justify that. We all know it. That is crushing the people. Tonight's Talking Points memo discusses the truth behind the. It's literally called Talking Points. The show is literally called Talking Points. That's that's amazing. I don't know. That's great. This country of Cuba, starting with their revolution in 1959. Joining me now to discuss them is Liberal MP Nicole Flint. Nicole, wait. thanks so much for your time. And wait, 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 wait. So hold on. So you, you, you're doing a segment on Cuba, right? And wait, is she? I don't get it. Is she a Gosano or something? Nicole Flint. She's the member for Boothby. Ah, so she's some, just, I don't know, some random fucking Liberal Party right-wing politician who apparently has never, ever done anything regarding Cuba ever. And this is who they invite on to their, to their segment about Cuba. This is the best they could do. Just get some random dumbass who doesn't know anything to come on and, and talk about it. Let's see. Joining Bernardi for another Friday night. It's great to see you. Thank you, Corey. Thank you for having me, and hello to all of your viewers. Look at this guy's face, by the way. He's just like a permanent fucking scowl. Like he looks like he looks like he's in pain all the time. Poor guy. Well, Nicole, let's kick it off. Before communism, Cuba ranked among the most developed of Latin American countries, with living standards exceeding those of many European countries. Excuse me, which? It doesn't seem that uh, that's the case now. It's right down the bottom of the pecking order. Should we blame external forces or communism, do you think? We should absolutely blame communism, Cora. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm going to ask you this question with two options that, that you, that I know, and I, and I know exactly which one you're going to say. Who is this for? This is for, like, my mum. Honestly, this is for, like, mums and grandmas everywhere. 1959 and Castro took over and then did all sorts of deals with the Russians and imported the that Russians. style of communism. Uh, um, Cuba was one of the most successful uh, Spanish-speaking countries in the world. It was on an economic par with right. countries like Ireland and Finland. What? I can tell you right now, I've seen these stats before. And Cuba it had 10 times less GDP than Ireland. What is she on? And now if you look at the figures uh, per cap GDP figures per capita, Ten it's times about $8,000 per, uh, per capita, US dollars, sorry, per capita for, um, for Cubans uh, compared to 48,000 US dollars per capita for the Finns and about 78,000 US dollars per capita for the Irish. So we can see how terribly far Cuba has fallen. Okay. 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 I, I happen to have a very useful document for this situation. One of the most well-regarded documents estimating the, the GDP per capita of um, Cuba before the revolution. It's from, um, I think it's from 1965, and it's been used pretty much ever since. This article. So, this article, which is still used today, estimated that the per capita income of Cuba in 1953 was not less than $430. And its upper end goes up to about $600 per capita, okay? So let's see. I'm just go to like 1950s. Irish GDP per capita. So you can already see here. GDP per capita 1950, not even 1953 when it would have been higher. Ireland, 3,500. Cuba, 430. So where does she get that? Where does she get... Cuba and Ireland. 
being on the same level before the revolution. It's literally 10 times less. What about, is Finland in this list too? Finland is even higher, 4,000. Where does this fucking random, random Liberal Party MP get this from? Excuse me, this is unbelievable. Just making shit up as she goes along, right? Literally 10 times less. I could complicate this more because I, I know the source that sh she's using here. I've heard this argument before when they specifically mention Finland and Cuba. So let's look at that as well. Because they, they, they check Google Scholar, they click on the first article and they read the abstract. This is it. So it says here, Cuban income per capita was on par with Ireland or Finland, right? The thing is, this article doesn't actually argue that. The abstract is saying that the article says something that it doesn't because they're doing like a, a bit of a interesting trick here. But the trick that he does here is that he claims that Cuba had the same, the same, um, like, um, like consumption per capita before the revolution. Consumption per capita being the consumption per capita, as in people buying stuff, basically, transactions that were going on before the revolution was 35% of GDP, of GDP per capita. Now it's 14%, okay? And his argument is essentially that because the consumption per capita was higher beforehand, that must mean that the standard of living was also higher somehow. But do you know why Cuba's consumption per capita was higher beforehand? Because the people who were consuming weren't Cubans, they were fucking tourists. It's because Cuba was a massive fucking tourist destination for all of the 1950s, and the people who were buying this shit were not the people living there. You can see, um, in another sense as well, I'll show you a graph that pretty much shows how useless consumption per capita is as a statistic for, for you know, showing this sort of thing. Luxembourg, consumption per capita. 266% of GDP per capita. How does Luxembourg have 266% of a GDP per capita in consumption, right? How is that possible? People don't make enough money to do that. It's more than the amount of money that is actually being produced in the country, more than the amount of wealth that is being produced in the country. The answer to that is fucking simple. It's like a fucking finance haven, like a banking haven. So most of the people who are consuming technically in Luxembourg don't actually live there, so you can't fucking use this as a measure of any real meaningful capacity in Luxembourg. Look, Ireland as well, 210% of GDP per capita is consumption. Because Ireland is another well-known tax haven. None of this means anything. It's a worthless fucking statistic that you cannot really glean anything from, anything meaningful from. Especially in Cuba, where obviously most of this consumption would have been being among the rich, among rich people and among tourists. Stuff like that. So, it's a dumb argument. Another reason why I love this article is because, um, it's just my favorite article ever, by the way. It's very funny, the mental gymnastics. So later in the article, the guy, the guy tries to do like, like he, he estimates, um, the Huber HDI index in 1955 versus 2010. Right? So he's, he, this article is him trying to argue that Cuba is now much worse than it was before the revolution. Right? But he, he runs into an inconvenience here. His own, his own calculations show that at worst, Cuba is at the exact same point relatively in the HDI out of the countries that he also calculated it for than it was before. And relative to Latin America, it's actually better. As you can see, with his, new, his, 2011, his 2011 calculations, it is now above Argentina, for example. It is now um, above Uruguay, when previously it was below them. And that's an important thing, an important thing that I need to acknowledge because Latin America as a whole has greatly declined since the 1950s, so that Cuba is still maintaining its position here and it's, it's relatively ahead of these other countries, shows that it hasn't experienced quite the same level of decline, okay? Which is a point for the revolution. So he runs into an issue here. The, his issue here is that, you know, well, this isn't good for him because even his own calculations show that Cuba is the same. He also notes that um, in, in the earlier rankings, Cuban healthcare and education were, were worse than what its income would suggest. So the way that HDI is calculated is it's from life expectancy, GDP, GDP per capita, and from average years of schooling, right? So clearly in the earlier example, Cuba was being propped up by its relatively higher GDP per capita, right? But he himself admits that its life expectancy and education were worse back then than you would expect for a GDP per capita. So it's being propped up. And the opposite is true Currently, a GDP per capita has relatively gone down, but its performance in healthcare and education has gone up. So a smart person would look at this and say, well, that doesn't really 
It doesn't really make any sense, right? Clearly, there's there's not much of a correlation between Cuba's GDP per capita and it's actually it's actual outcomes to human welfare, right? So me, so maybe weighing GDP so GDP per capita so high in the initial calculation in 1955 would be a mistake then, and its quality of life isn't actually equal. It's actually better now, right? That makes perfect sense. But he doesn't do that. Instead, what he does is hilariously try to calculate freedom. Now, obviously, freedom is an abstract concept. You cannot quantify freedom. But he, he makes a new table. Human development for 2011, including freedom. You know, my initial calculations might have shown that Cuba has, at the very worst, the exact same human development as before. But what about when we consider this abstract concept that is impossible to quantify? And that, and that I, I am obviously defining along incredibly ideological lines. Well, then Cuba is now the country of the worst quality of life in the entire world. Significantly lower than the Soviet Union. Oh, got him, dude. Fucking got him. Great fucking work. You did it. You proved it. Cuba has the worst quality of life in the entire world. You did it. Great fucking job. And this is a peer-reviewed academic article. There's an entire industry in the US that pumps out these sorts of articles about Cuba. Basically like throwing a temper tantrum about the fact that it's high in all of these quality of life rankings. And this is, this is how they operate. And this is where that woman in the Sky News articles got her Finland Ireland comparison from. This article specifically. Absolutely hilarious stuff. So that's a, a deep dive on her source for this claim here. And I think I've refuted it beyond any reasonable level that any other streamer would ever do. So I'm going to continue the video now. In the world economic rankings, thanks to the, 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 com the communist system that was implemented by Castro. That's exactly right. The <laughs> proof is in the pudding. The proof is in the pudding. What proof? I literally just proved them wrong by looking at articles that I already had on hand because I've, I've heard this shit before. And the proof is in the pudding. Talking point number two, Nicole. In 1959, we acknowledge that unpopular dictator Batista was ousted by Castro and other guerrillas. Fidel Castron. That sounds like someone who does castrations. Fidel Castron. Snip, snip, snip. Oh man, I love Australian media. It's hilarious. Guerrillas turned communist. The new rulers adopted a one-party system. They suspended civil liberties. The economy was nationalized and the society was militarized. Now, all of these things are not right. only damaging to the economy, but they're actually damaging to the liberty of individual people, aren't they? And this is part so of the hallmark of communism. They take away your freedoms and your freedom of... This guy literally just is like an NPC. Like, this guy is not a fucking human being. Listen to him. This guy's like, literally, this is like the definition of an NPC. He's just like repeating the set phrases in a monotone voice while, while as he has like a completely unemotional facial, facial expression, like he's clearly reading off a teleprompter. This is his life. This is his life's work. What a joke. Absolutely, Corey. And that is, uh, that is why Cuba has suffered so much is because of the communist system that was implemented <laughs> by Castro, not to mention, uh, you know, the forced labour camps, uh, people not being able to run their own businesses. I think even still, you know, p private business is a <clears throat> tiny employer in Cuba compared to... I mean, you can open businesses in Cuba. This lady has information that's like 20 years old. ...to the government, uh, which employs most of the population. Oh, the government employs most of the population? And sounds based to me. So um, they've governed through fear. They've governed mm -hmm. through nationalization of industry. Based. Once upon the time, Cuba had a, a really successful uh, agri and flourishing agricultural uh, industry and industries, uh, particularly famous for its sugar production at one stage. And that's just not the case anymore. It literally is the case now. Cuba's sugar production is the vast majority of its exports. Like, they've just di diversified a bit more. Well, look, I'm not going to find a fucking article Googling for an hour, but Cuba still produces and exports tons of sugar. It's its number one export industry. So what the fuck is she talking about? Like, is her problem that, like, the, the people who work in the sugar industry aren't slaves anymore? Interesting. Yeah, to some of us, it's famous for its rum and its uh, cigars, but um, we'll leave that there, Nicole. You can stick... <laughs> This guy is literally an NPC. Literally. Like a, a, a husk of a human being. Interesting. Weird stuff. To the sugar. <laughs> uh, talking point number three. To eradicate any anti-communist resistance, 
A wave of terror was launched. More than 100,000 people were killed as a result of the revolution. And by 1961, over 300,000 people were detained in gulag-style concentration camps. Excuse me. Now, this is quite extraordinary. 100,000? 300? Where are they getting these numbers? These gulag-style concentration camps in China as well. But communism isn't (laughs) about the people. It's about eradicating any dissent, any opposition. Hold on. Let's look at, like... um... So Cuba Archive, which I have addressed in uh, my Che Guevara so-called murderer video, like these people try to basically say that anyone who died in Cuba for any reason was killed by the evil communist Castro regime. Okay. So let's look at um, how many deaths does Cuba, does Cuba Archive claim have happened in Cuba since the, the, end, the triumph of the revolution in December of 1959 until 2020, which is the last data point available. How many are there? 625 total, scraping the bottom of the barrel, that's all they got. Most of the deaths in this, in this Cuba archive are from during the revolution, not after, right? To eradicate any, communi- any anti-communist resistance, a wave of terror was launched. More than 100,000 have been killed as a result of the revolution. But why does this like Miami Gusano database which claims that basically everyone died because because Fidel Castro and Che Guevara personally executed them, only arrive at a figure of 625 dead or disappeared since the revolution. Interesting stuff, right? Obviously just numbers pulled out of the fucking ass of of these morons. And of it's 300,000 people detained in gulag-style concentration camps. They never existed. Doesn't make any sense. Just make straight up making shit up. Communism isn't about the people, it's about eradicating any dissent, any opposition, and they will do it by any means necessary, won't they? That's right, Corey. It's about, it is about the antithesis of freedom. They want to take (laughs) people's freedom from them. And I think it was Churchill who said something along the lines of the vice of capitalism is the unequal sharing of, of blessings, but the virtue of socialism and communism. Why these people just like throw out like the fucking set phrases. It's all they like, it's all they can do. Like get the random fucking Liberal Party backwater Adelaide MP out into your fucking um out into your fucking video to talk about Cuba, a place that she literally hadn't heard of until last week. The misery of all. So that's the that's that's the big difference here. No freedom and misery is shared evenly because you cannot uh, you cannot direct your own life. You don't have the freedom to make your own decisions. You're- I mean, Cuba is objectively better off materially than all of its neighbors. Just look at like the same ranking that we were using, HDI ranking a second ago. Now, HDI isn't a perfect ranking, but it's at least in- decently indicative. You know, Cuba is sixth, or at least it was sixth um, back in 2019, okay? Six total. Out of its neighbors, the only ones that have a better quality of life, like its direct neighbors, are Panama, which is a U.S. colony full of rich people, one of the most unequal countries in Latin America, and Costa Rica, okay? Better off than Mexico, than Peru, Colombia, Brazil. The average person is, is, better, is better off than all those countries, at least by this measure, okay? And if we go to its more direct neighbors like Central America, Nicaragua, Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, Haiti, Belize, it's far, the Dominican Republic, it's better off, okay? You know, they're just spouting bullshit uh, to a, an ignorant Australian audience of grandmas and 50 plus year old mothers who are very bored and they just want to hear someone tell them how bad Cuban communism constant is. constant fear that you will, will be thrown into a forced labor camp, that you'll never see your family again. That- constant fear that, where, is the, where are the forced labor camps in Cuba? What the fuck are you talking about? The US now, that's a country that has tons of forced prison labor. Not Cuba. You will be killed. Uh, it's it's yeah. ruling uh, with, with through fear and through absolute force. Well, Nicole, if Churchill didn't say that, um, they're going to attribute it to you because it was beautifully expressed. <laughs> now, this is the wow. point, talking point number four, that really gets Churchill. my goat. <laughs> okay. This really gets my goat, right? Today, one of the mass murderers of Cuba's... Does, does this get your goat? Is this what gets your goat? Man, this really gets my goat. A revolution, that's uh, Ernesto Che Guevara. Has- Ernesto Che Guevara. Oh, I hate Australians. Oh, I, I can't wait to, to get citizenship here and renounce my Australian citizenship, man. His image displayed on T-shirts that are worn by clearly ignorant people or those who endorse mass murder in support of communism. I absolutely do. This annoyed me at university. It annoys me when oh, I yeah. see people in the... It annoyed you at university when? 
Dude, you look like you went to university before he was fucking born. Streets with this. Are they really just stupid or are they supporting a mass murdering communist? Oh, Corey, both. Absolutely. Uh, look, a, a basic bit of research reveals that um, their idol, who is splashed across so many stickers and T-shirts and posters and all over the internet, uh, was a truly terrible person. He wasn't even Cuban, but most of his terror and was implemented in Cuba. He established the labor camps. That literally never happened, as I've gone over in my video on the topic. Not going to reiterate it a million times. The only camp they established, the camp, was called Guanacabibes, and it was, um, it was not a labor camp. It was a, it was specifically for high, high level functionaries in his economics ministry. He would send them there rather than firing them when they did like really fucked up shit, like fucking their, their friend's wife. Okay. So, you know, they could go there and like, um, sort of like contribute to like peasant projects and stuff, and then be back, be allowed back into their cushy job at the economics ministry. And the idea that these were labor camps is obviously absurd because the people who were in them were armed. They were necessarily armed at the time because there was an ongoing insurgency called the, the Escambare conflict. So, you know, it's kind of weird to give people who are apparently in gulags AK-47s. That's all that I'm saying. They went there voluntarily because the, the other option was to lose their cushy little office job in the Ministry of the Economy. He is personally responsible for killing at least... 120 to 140 people. If, he, if he's personally responsible for that, who are they and why were they killed? Give us that. Were they fascists? Maybe. It's possible. She's not going to let us know. He is on the record saying he didn't care if people were innocent or guilty when they were... No, he's not. That is a, a very common fake quote invented by Miami author Umberto Fontava. ...killed, uh, and he particularly targeted people who were gay. So... And again, I made a, literally an entire video showing that there's literally no basis for that whatsoever. Um, he, he is responsible for so much death, for so much human misery. Just, just why he's not responsible? He literally, he left Cuba before any sort of systemic repression of gay people even began. He literally wasn't there. So how did he specifically target gay people? NPC and for people stuff. people to celebrate his life, I think, you know, I think if you've not done your research, some of them who do get around in the t-shirts probably think that he rode a motorbike around South America and was a freedom fighter. That is the opposite. Of That's literally the truth. Thank you for expressing it so, so succinctly. ...of what he was. And people mm. should do a bit more research. But as we know, Corey, the left, the left <laughs> don't pride themselves on getting the facts right. Wow, that is a bold fucking claim from two literal human robots. These people, like, like ha have less of a range of answers to questions than fucking Amazon Alexa just telling you the first thing that it, it reads on Google. They like yep. to pride themselves on, on emotion and, you know, trying to... <laughs> wow, I've never seen people describe themselves well, purporting to be describing other people as well as this. Trying to convince people that, um, that they're right... Uh, and that we're wrong uh, through arguing on emotion rather than the facts. Yeah. Wow. One of my favourite days at university was um, Che Guevara's, uh, when he died, they called it No More Che Day. And uh, I think it was the Liberal students who were behind that. It was um, a terrific event. It Are you sure, man? You must, you must have gone to university in fucking 1920. I don't think that ever happened. Soon got banned, of course. Nicole Flint, <laughs> uh, I love your work. Thanks for joining me on Bernardi tonight. Well, Thanks, Bernardi guys. tonight, that guy is literally like, he is phoning it in, man. He, he's just not into it at all. Why would anyone ever watch this? Like reading a teleprompter with like text that was, that was put into like uh, an, an algorithm of like NPC right-wing talking points. Bizarre stuff.